Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another voice actor spotlight. When it comes to the 80s cartoons, there are a few characters you just can't pass up. Like Optimus Prime, Megatron, Starscream and Bumblebee. But there are other classic characters from other shows that you can't ignore. Like Duke and Commander Cobra from G.I. Joe, Lion-O from Thundercats, She-Ra from the show of the same name, and of course from He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, He-Man and his nemesis Skeletor. The latter had such an iconic voice and laugh, and it's all thanks to his voice performer, Alan Oppenheimer. This man is a legend. He is one of the most recognized actors in the industry, and some of the roles I'll display today will surprise you. Or at least I hope they will. Let's get started. Born in New York City on April 23, 1930, Alan Oppenheimer is another of my so-called internet ghosts. But I did find some interviews where he talked about his youth, saying he always had a good year, and would imitate actors to entertain his mother and her friends. Family, it seems, is often your first public. While he was studying at Kennergy Tech, he was also working at KDKA Pittsburgh, working on a radio show called Adventures in Research. He would play a different scientist every week and a minor role to tag along. That's where he got his early experiences and eventually got him into acting. After doing a lot of on-camera commercials, TV series and movies, he told his agent he wanted to do voiceovers. After auditioning and doing voices for commercials, he finally went and auditioned for Hanna-Barbera. Joe Barbera asked him if he could do a voice for a talking dog. And Alan did this. And Joe said, OK, you start tomorrow. And that would take him on a path to play one of the most remembered characters from the 80s, Skeletor. <laughs> you guessed correctly, He-Man. But you'll never find the real discs. But let's catch up on his earlier roles. We'll do this by decades for simplicity. In the 60s, he started as an uncredited morgue attendant in the Untouchables TV series. But he soon got a couple recurring roles, such as Ed Clark in The Felony Squad, or Murray Mouse in He and She. On The Andy Griffith Show, he guest starred as Mr. Ruskin. And on Hogan's Heroes, he played four different characters. In the 70s, the list is very long, and therefore I will focus on the more popular ones. He guest starred in an enormous amount of shows, such as Love, American Style, Bewitch, Bonanza, Here's Lucy, The New Perry Mason, The Partridge Family, Mannix, and Happy Days. He also got a lot of recurring roles, like when he played Dr. Danfield in Medical Center, Jesse Smith in Big Eddie, Dr. Rudy Wells in The Six Million Dollar Man, and Simon Cappell in the miniseries Washington Behind Closed Doors. He also did movies, so you might remember him from Westworld as the Chief Supervisor, The Ground Star Conspiracy as General Hackett, or Freaky Friday as Mr. Jofer. But in the 70s is where he started voice work, and the most popular show he played in are the new Scooby-Doo movies, doing multiple voices, Gorak in Valley of the Dinosaur, and starred as Friday Cat on the show of the same name. On the all-new Super Friends Hours, he was the Gentleman Ghost, and starred as Mighty Mouse in the new adventures of Mighty Mouse. On Thundar the Barbarian, you could have heard him as Mindoc, the Mind Menace, and Morag. And on the Smurfs, he played Vanity Smurf and Omnibus. If you take a peek at the 80s, you'll realize how busy he got. On camera, you might have seen him as Captain Finnerty in a short-lived show called Eyeshite, but also as Dr. Siegler in Hotel. He played in many TV movies, the likes of Divorce Wars, A Love Story, The Execution, and Strong Medicine, and he kept guest starring in series including two roles on Knight Rider, two more on Night Court, Dr. Linder on Matlock, Dean Brown on Who's the Boss, and he took on the role of Mayor Alvin Tootwheeler on Mama's Family. And although his work went uncredited, he worked on the most magical movie of our childhood, except Transformers the movie, The Never-Ending Story, voicing the iconic Falcor. Never. I'm a luck dragon. My name is Falcor. Also, he voiced the Rockbiter. Excuse me. Would it be all right if I joined you this evening? And Gamork. Because people have begun to lose their hopes and forget their dreams. So the nothing grows stronger. And close the movie as the narrator. But that's another story. But where he shined was in cartoons. As I mentioned, he did the irreplaceable Skeletor. Trying to atone for your crime, eh, Xanthor? 
Why not give me the discs? I'll give you something in return! But did you know that he also voiced Cringer? <laughs> I'll make a deal with you. I'll go with you, but as Cringer, m m maybe I can bring some common sense to this quest. And his ferocious counterpart, Battle Cat. Arr, we've gone around the entire structure and there is no door! As well as Man at Arms. Strange wind condition. That was an understatement. And Merman. Here's a go. Her guardian, Man at Arms. Rescued a victim I had chosen for the Sea Demon. I now demand revenge! But that's far from all he did. He's credited for 69 named guest characters on Masters of the Universe. And you reprise Cringer, Battle Cat, Skeletor, and Man at Arms for the Secret of the Sword movie, to reprise them again for She Ra Princess of Powers, plus adding four original characters for that show, and not forgetting Zipper for the He Man and She Ra A Christmas special. That's a long list. As for the Transformers, he joined the cast during season 2, voicing new characters introduced in the 1985 toy line, being the pacifist Beachcomber. Well, let's see if I can learn your language. The battle-ready Warpath. Hey, hoist, old buddy! I think it's time we bam join the party! The Water Scout Sea Spray. My heart may look like an energon pump, but that doesn't mean it can't fail. The Stunticon Breakdown. I'm not, but if I vibrate hard enough, maybe I can short out my energon bars. As I predicted. And the butler, Dinsmore. The, the space shuttle, sir? No sport there. An aircraft carrier, perhaps. In other shows, he played the role of Bakerville in Pound Puppies, five characters on The Greatest Adventures Story from the Bible, four characters in Film Nation's Ghostbusters, and two on Brave Star, being Outless Cuz and Andalbar, which he reprised for Brave Star the movie. He was also Jonathan Kent in 1988's Superman and played Blob in the Pride of the X-Men TV pilot. This is where you stop. Nothing moves the Blob. Then we get to the 90s where he worked constantly. On camera, he appeared on a good many shows, but the more popular ones would be Murder, She Wrote as Dr. Raymond Orbach and in Married with Children as Mr. Foodie. Also getting a recurring role on Murphy Brown as Eugene Kinsella and another one as Ben Brookstone for the show Home Free. Star Trek is a franchise he's been involved with four times. On Star Trek The Next Generation, he played Korot, and on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, he played the role of Captain Keog, followed by playing the Nezu Ambassador on Star Trek Voyager, and finally he did additional voices on Star Trek Starfleet Command Volume 2 Empires at War. He did a few more TV appearances like in Ned and Stacy, Caroline in the City, Diagnosis Murder, and Touched by an Angel. Voice-wise, the most popular roles would be Mr. Pomeroy on Tailspin, Merlin on Legend of Prince Valiant, Jack Archer on Phantom 2040, Watu the Watcher and Fire Lord in 1994's Fantastic Four, and Ludwig von Richter on Jumanji the Animated Series. And that's just name characters. He did so many voices for other shows like Where's Waldo, James Bond Jr., Invasion America, and Zorro. He also started working with video games, doing voices for Revenant and Teifu Rat of the Tiger. And in the 2000s, he mainly did voices, both in shows and video games. Cartoon-wise, you heard him as Norman Berg in The Big O, Father Time in The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Alfred Pennyworth in the movie Superman, Batman, Public Enemies, The Scientist in Nine, Darren and the Sun on Adventure Times, and Old Timer in Toy Story 4. And for video games, fan of God of War 2 will remember him as Prometheus, but I remember him as Liren and Umdwil in Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. He also portrayed Chariot Master and Dentos on Kid Icarus Uprising, and Paladin Brandis in Fallout 4. Now he did reprise the role of Skeletor on three occasions. In the 2016 video game He-Man Tappers of Grayskull, and very recently he did the voices for both Skeletor and He-Man in the Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie in 2022. But on Masters of the Universe Revelation, he was snubbed for the role he's famous for, only given a consolation prize by voicing Mossman. Now I try to avoid personal opinions on my spotlights, and I really don't know how Alan feels about it, but I felt it was disrespectful. 
especially for a legend such as this. What I've shown here is but a sample of what he did in his career. This man deserves our respect and admiration. He's been in our lives since we took our first step when you think about it. He kept us entertained all these years because he loved doing so. And to me, that's the respect he earned. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Alan Oppenheimer's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really like reading you guys. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care. Oh,